Hello everybody, welcome back to my Country Sparkles channel. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I've learned the first two weeks of having new chicks. Now I've never had chicks before, so all this is very new and I'm going to include some things in here that some people just don't talk about or some people do, but it's just kind of harder to find. So let's get into it. The first two weeks of their life are when they are the cutest and they're little fluff balls and they're so sweet and they like will cuddle and like fall asleep in your hands and they're so fun. It's so fun to be around and those are the pictures of the little chicks that you see. That is when they are only about two weeks old. After two weeks, they start to lose their feathers and they get their bigger teenage adult feathers in and they look more blotchy and they're getting bigger in size too so they're not as cute to like just hold in your hand but the first two weeks is what I'm talking about so keep that in mind if you are thinking about getting chicks and you think they're gonna be all cute and little fluff balls for like a month or two no it's one or two weeks so that is one of the first probably largest shocks that I didn't know before I got them and because they grow so fast, we also planned like smaller areas than what they needed. So we've had to up our birder sizes multiple times <laughs> to compensate for the amount of chicks, chickens we have along with the size that they're growing. They are still cute even after two weeks and they are so fun. There's mo so many things that you can do with them and we definitely don't regret it, but that is something I didn't know. I just didn't know how fast they transitioned to that teenage stage of chickens. When you are holding your chicken, they are so fun and cute to hold, but be warned, they are an animal, they will poop on you. Now, hopefully you know that, some people don't. My son was very surprised when he first started holding our chicks and they like pooped on him like three times. He's like, what's happening? Why are they pooping on me? Luckily at that stage, the early stage, their poops pretty so are pretty um, solid. It's not like all mushy or anything like that. So you can normally pick it up and it's okay. Sometimes you can get some mushy poos, but just be aware that's like when they're tired, they'll poop. When they're scared, they're, they'll poop. <laughs> These are animals. So that was something that really shocked my son. And so I thought that I would add that in here for any littles out there, but hopefully you know, animals poop. And they don't poop, they don't have a diaper on or anything. So just expect that and ex keep some baby wipes on hand and all will be good. If you really want to stay safe, my son has started putting a paper towel under them or in his hand or something like that, kind of keep them on the paper towel. And then if they poop, he's like, oh, I can pick it up and I can throw it away and it's no big deal. So that's how he counters that. Another thing about chicks I didn't know is they have different cheeps depending on what they want or what they need. It's so funny, like I never would have thought, but even after having them for such a short time, I could totally tell their cheeps. So there's just their light little cheeping where they're just kind of talking to each other, wandering around, eating, being with their friends. So that's their like little calm cheeps. Those are cute. Then there's their hungry cheeps they get a little bit louder and it's kind of more annoying. Just like a little bit more high pitched and just constant a little bit faster. And then there's their scared cheeps, which we started learning about when they started jumping out of their um, brooder pool, which is where we kept them just in a little kitty pool. They started jumping out at about one and a half weeks along and their cheeps were like, loud and fast and they were mad and they were scared and it was crazy the difference and I was like the first time it happened at nighttime and we weren't there by them I was like whoa I woke up and I was like there is something wrong I've got to go check on my little hennies and one had jumped out and she was flipping and it was so cute <laughs> but there is definitely a difference in their uh, cheeping and I had no idea and it's just been so fun and so amazing to learn about that. When I just said that they started jumping out of our pool at one and a half weeks old, I was not joking. Our pool is just a kiddie pool hard surface one. So it's about eight inches high, which is like double or triple their actual height in there. So it was super surprising when that happened. Um, they started kind of perching on the edge and then a couple of them would jump out, but then they couldn't figure out how to jump back in. So then they would get scared and start chirping like crazy to get put back in. So keep that in mind. 
kitty pulls great for about a week and a half <laughs> and then they just can start jumping out and you just have you can put a top over or something like that to keep them in but that is something to keep in mind during that time also uh, when one does it they all do it so once one starts hopping up there all of them want to be hopping up there <laughs> So if you've got one doing it soon, you're going to have all of them doing it, which is kind of fun that they learn from each other. That's one of the perks of um, watering them when you first get them. You have to teach them to water like where they are at and kind of how to do it. Um, I've heard a lot of uh, uh, YouTubers or bloggers talk about like you have to use like the the jar with the base and then the water comes out and they stick their head in it and eat out of it which is great that's one way to water for sure um, in that instance they will get pine shavings and poop and everything in there and they do that with their food food and water pine shavings they kick it up into there they're messy you'll have to clean those out at least once a day it's not too bad once you get used to it but it is an extra chore to kind of do um, something that we did instead was we hooked vertical nipples to the bottom of a one and a half gallon bucket and we just drilled holes in there twisted the nipples in there and then we hung it on a board over our brooder and that worked out great we had to teach our chicks how to uh, drink out of that so we put their beak up to it kind of tapped it on there and then water came in their mouth and then they learned to drink it and we did it to each one of them to make sure they learned but really after they saw their friends doing it they knew what to do and so that was really helpful that is what if one gets it really they can all get a get it pretty well so we like the vertical nipple watering system even for our brand new chicks that we got that were two days old out of the mail they learned how to feed off of that very very well um, they do um, waste a lot of water in that situation though too but you also waste water when um, pine shavings get in there and you have to clean it out and wash out all the gunk and stuff so that's also a waste of water so it's kind of like choose your waste so for the vertical nipples they will hit hit it get a drop or two in their mouth and then a couple drops will fall to the ground um, when that happens I have a tray underneath there to catch the extra water to keep all the pine shavings around from getting soaked and if you want to check that out um, check out either my chick brooder number two or number three I mention those and show my different watering systems in both of those videos so check those out if you want to see how we do our watering it keeps it clean it's easy to fill up there is waste but I don't really feel like it's too much more than if I was cleaning out the water every every day or sometimes a couple times a day depending on how many chickens you have and how messy they are which they are very messy another thing they really like to teach each other um, is where to eat and we noticed we have two batches of chicks we have one that our first batch that we had for two weeks and then at two weeks for some crazy reason we decided to get another new set of chicks so they were like two days old when our others were two weeks and we noticed the ones that are two weeks now when we first got them, we started feeding them out of our hand the first day because we thought it was cute and we were cuddly with them and everything. So we started feeding them out of their hand and they loved to eat out of our hand and they would come to us and it was welcoming and they just did it from literally day one and we just did it for multiple days and they'll still eat out of our hands. Our new ones, we did not feed them out of our hands the first couple days and now they don't get it. <laughs> they like refuse to eat out of our hands so if that's something that you want to teach your chicks to come to you and um, me personally I only wanted them eating out of my hands for a little while because uh, as their beaks got bigger they could get a hold of my fingers and stuff a little bit better and pinch they don't have teeth so it doesn't really hurt but I was like mm, nope I'm good with the little itsy bitsy um, beaks they didn't hurt at all but their bigger ones get a little pinch in there <laughs> but uh, one of them once they start doing it then all of them will follow and do it along so I would definitely say start that early they're pretty smart in that sense dumb in other ways <laughs> but they're pretty s smart with food and water so just keep that in mind as you're doing things with your new baby chicks another thing that they will teach each other which is not such a good thing is pecking so even from like 
little itsy bitsy ones. Our first batch didn't do so much pecking when they were within the first two weeks, but we've noticed the second batch actually have, um, especially like one in particular pecks quite a bit at the other ones and just picks her feathers and stuff. And it's normal for some and then some just do a little bit more to establish pecking order, but you wanna watch out with too much pecking so they don't injure each other. And if one does it, to is doing it to like one bird a whole bunch, then I notice that the others will come and also peck at that same bird. And so you have to keep that in mind and maybe have a area where you can isolate them for a few hours to make sure the one that's getting picked on doesn't get injured or you can put the pecker in timeout to get them away from it and then they can start a different pecking order and to teach, get the idea of pecking out of her mind. Their brains are pretty small so I feel like they forget things pretty quickly. And so a little isolation thing would be helpful even in their early years. And like that could even be like the box that you brought them home in from the store or that you got them in the mail from. Just a little isolation thing that can still be kept in with the other birds, but they're still isolated. As we're talking about food here and water, I want to tell you something that um, we learned from an employee at Cal Ranch or some advice that she gave us. She said that she was reading about how when you first bring chicks home into your home because of the drive, like either from the store or um, on the UPS trucks or whatever, however you receive your chicks, they get really stressed and really anxious in that time. And one way for them to relieve stress that they do is overeat and they gorge themselves. I mean, really, I do the same thing. If I'm stressed or something, I know I gorge myself and I come to regret it later. <laughs> same thing with chicks. When they're stressed, one of their ways to relieve that is they just naturally eat and eat and eat because they're so stressed. So what this employee told us was when you first bring them home for the first four hours that they're in your home, um, give them only water, no food no food to eat and that water will get things moving into their body and get whatever's in there out and kind of clean out their system a little bit but also that four hours will also give them time to relax get established in their new home and feel a little bit more comfortable and then after the four hours introduce food to them and then they'll just eat what they need instead of gorging themselves because they are so stressed out because of the situation but another thing in that scenario though is they are gonna be kinda hungry. So they're gonna be mad that they're not getting any food which will make their hungry chirping very loud and kind of annoying and you start to think, oh my word, what did I sign up for? These chickies are not quiet. These are not little cheapies. They are kind of loud and annoying. But as soon as they're fed, everything's fine and they relax and they're happy and they eat and then when we fall asleep and they'll take a little rest and then you're like oh there's the calm chickies <laughs> so that was one of the best pieces of advice that we feel like we got and we followed and it has worked out really well another reason you want to do that and don't want them to overeat is because if they overeat and they get too much food in their system and not enough water, then it's hard to clean out and it gets really clumpy and pasty-like. And you might have heard about pasty butt. We also call it poopy butt here in our home. And that is when their stool isn't so soft. It sticks to their vent when it comes out and then it will just stay there on their rear end and then it will dry and it'll try to poop again and then that'll get stuck in there and it'll dry and other stuff will get stuck to it like the pine shavings and then they won't be able to poop eventually because it's all clogged up and then because of that in the back backing up into their system um, they will eventually die so giving them food for hours after you've received them will help to clear everything out and to and it will help prevent poopy butt maybe not 100%, but it will make it a lot better than it could have been. And so since we're on the topic of poopy or pasty butt, um, what you wanna do if that happens, so it's a clump of poop that's stuck to their vent hole and it's covering the whole thing and nothing can come out. So it's a cork, it's pretty much a cork in them. One of my favorite ways to clean them off is I just take them, I put them in my hand so they're bottom was this way and their head was this way and I turn on the water and make it warm not hot but warm will help dissolve the poop 
and I just run a stream of water over that vent to clean it off. And sometimes I'd have to stick them in there for, I don't know, three minutes or something like, like that to get it soft enough so it will fall off. You can also um, take a baby wipe and wipe it off if you catch it fast and it's still pretty soft or a warm washcloth. You can dab it on there and just hold it on and let it soften up and then wipe it away. Those are some great ways to solve that problem. But within their first two weeks of life, you really want to check each of your chicks to make sure they don't develop pasty butt because it is life altering. <laughs> so there's my solutions for pasty butt. The next thing we have learned a lot about since getting our chicks is about the heat lamps. So you want to make sure that the heat lamp is close enough to keep them warm, but far enough away so they don't get burned or the pine shavings around them don't get burned. It's really important that they are super nice and warm when they first come to you and then you slowly, after a few weeks, can um, take the heat away just a little bit at a time to wean them off of it before you get them transferred into your chicken coop, which we have not reached that point yet. But so we're still learning that a little bit, but we have learned from the very beginning, good indicators that tell you where that your heat lamp is in the right position are if the lamp is super close to them or wherever the lamp is. If the chicks are huddled really close together and they're in a tight bunch and they're on top of each other just trying to get warm, then that means your light's not close enough. And so you want to move it a little bit closer. If they are forming a circle and go and like sleeping on the outside ring of the light, like the kind of cool but warm places, that means that your light's too close because they can't get right under it and be comfortable. They need to be right on the outskirts of it. So that means your light needs to come up a little bit. But if all your chicks are kind of scattered in bunches around underneath the light in like different areas, then that means you have a good distance from them. A lot of times, I've noticed our chicks, they like to snuggle with each other. So there's normally a clump of two to four together. I feel like, and they'll like clump off together. Sometimes they'll all sleep together, but not like rolling on top of each other. That means that they're too cold. But just like calm little clumps all around, then you know your light is in the right position if that's what you're getting. So that was my favorite way to tell if our temperature light positioning is correct. We went big <laughs> when we got our chickens. We have got 45 chickens right now. We ordered 41, 43 is what shipped to us. Two died in shipping. Um, each order sent an extra one. Um, two died in shipping, so we had 41 and then three died here at our home. So there is a loss and some sometimes things just happen. We don't really know what happens. There could be a defect. Maybe they weren't getting enough water or food or something like that, but something happened. We lost some chicks. Ever since then, they have been really good. And then two weeks after our original batch of 38, once they got to two weeks, we couldn't resist getting more, so we got seven more. So now we are up to 45 chickens right now. Um, about 10 will be leaving our house at some point, we hope. <laughs> but for right now, we have 45 chickens, so we went very big into what we bought for our chickens. And with that, to tell all the different um, types apart and breeds and stuff like that, we got little leg bands for them and it has been really helpful. So we've got the extra small leg band sizes which fit about um, one and a half to three weeks, no, it's four weeks, one and a half to four weeks. Their legs are just a little bit too small when they're super baby chicks, even for the extra small bands. So you can't put them on for about a week, but then you can put them on there and they have different sizes, but they only last for about two weeks after you put them on and then you'll want to move up to the next size. Like I said, they grow so fast. They're gonna grow way faster than you think they do. So enjoy them the first two weeks. And after about the first two weeks of them being in your house and then, um, chirping around and you play and having fun with them, they'll start kicking up a whole bunch of dust and they will start losing their baby feathers 
and you know those little those things don't stay in their brooder box and they will get all over your house so I, I totally thought that um, I would be fine with my chickens in our home for like one or two months and no <laughs> the answer is just no they are not as clean as they look when they they dust bath and all their pine shavings and stuff and they will kick that up under their wings and out everywhere and they grow up very fast. <laughs> they are so fun. We've learned so much and we're so grateful to have them and we love what our sons have already learned from them and their confidence in holding them and naming them. It's been such a great experience and I am so glad that I get to share it with you. And I hope you will follow us along as we go through this adventure and so if you like this video and you'd like to see more, please give it a thumbs up and like down below along with subscribe and that will tell you when our new videos will come out. I do all kinds of things um, from chickens now to DIY stuff and gardening and cleaning. I kind of have an all array of things just on our little homestead that we have here and it's a lot of fun i love any comments or questions that you want to leave i try to answer them as best as we can and we're learning and we welcome any advice or notes that you might have too and we love talking back and forth with you guys so we hope you'll join us on this journey and we will see you next time